Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Lee Height with Engineers Without Borders here in Cincinnati. And this video is about a biomass grinder that we came up with for grinding dry biomass. We were doing a project with banana plant waste and we had the need to grind up quite a bit of waste material. And we wanted to use something that was low cost, it was not the traditional hammer mill approach. And so this video is about what we came up with. I'll go through and explain how the grinder works and then we'll demonstrate grinding up some material. The grinder is based on a very simple principle, and that is putting the material in between two concrete surfaces, one of which is rotating. In this case, we're using a concrete drum with a shaft on it, handle on one end, and a pulley on the other end in case you want to motor drive it. Another drum that has no teeth in it for smooth, uh, a different kind of biomass that you want to grind up. The drum goes up against a grinding cup, in this case, rest up against that. The cup puts pressure in this direction against the rotating drum. We feed the material in here and it comes out the bottom down here. This is the actual holder for the cup and we'll show you what the rest of the grinder is here. The grinding head sets in a couple of channels like so that are curved for the uh, shaft. The top flips over for easy access to easy change of the heads and then the grinding cup hangs on an adjustable turnbuckle and goes up against the grinding wheel. So hold the grinding cup into the grinding wheel. There's just a little uh, pressure arm here that rests against that. You put a bucket of rocks on here, puts a force on the grinding cup into the grinding wheel, and you adjust the pressure by the amount of rocks. The grinding cup is supported such that it has two degrees of freedom. It's free to move in and out like this, and it's free to move side to side like this which makes it very flexible if it gets material caught in the biomass, such as small stones or a stick, it will uh, release the pressure and spit it on through without stalling the uh, machine. We're suggesting two different cutting heads. As I mentioned, the one with teeth and the one that's in here is smooth without teeth. And if you want to switch between heads because of different biomass, it's a very easy changeover. You remove the bucket, remove the cup, Flip it back, lift out the cutting head, and put in the other cutting head. Put it back together, put the cup on here. The pressure arm, the bucket of rocks, and you're, you're ready to go again. The biomass enters the grinding space right here. It is fed in with a quick connect disconnect speed chute that just slips on like that. We have a pusher rod that is shaped to fit the grinding wheel. It fits on like this and will help to force the material into the grinding space and begin the grinding operation. Looking at the front of the grinder, the output from the grinding wheel comes down this feed chute and you can put a container down here and the material goes in the feed chute up here and push it with the plunger and you're good to go. One thing we're very happy about is it takes very little pressure to run this. The grinder turns very easily. A child can do it. And if you put a motive force on it like a treadle pedal a device or a bicycle, it takes very little power to run it. And we do recommend keeping the RPM fairly low, 90 RPM or less. The slower it turns, the better it grinds. So with that, we'll demonstrate grinding up some various biomass materials. I wanted to point out that movement of the grinding cup is perfectly normal. If the grinding head is not perfectly circular, manufactured somewhat out of round, the grinding cup is very tolerant and can handle that. The first batch is a bucket of peanut shells, and we're using a grinding head with the teeth. And in this particular case, we do not need the pusher rod because the gravity is sufficiently feeding the peanut shells into the grinding head and we're getting adequate grinding. We did not achieve the particle size that we were looking for, so we're putting the batch through a second time. You'll notice that it does travel through somewhat faster the second time through, which is quite typical. In this particular case, we did achieve the particle size that we were looking for.
Here we're using a bucket of leaves and using the grinding head with the teeth. And as you can see in this particular case, we do need the pusher rod to force the material up against the surface of the grinding head and carry it into the grinding space. Typical of this grinder is that it will reduce the particle size each time it goes through the grinder, but it may not be the size you're looking for and you may again have to run it through a second time and in some situations a third time. But as you can see it goes rather quickly the second time through and in this particular case we did achieve the particle size that we were looking for. That pretty well wraps things up. You can find instructions and drawings for construction at the website home.fuse.net forward slash engineering. Thanks for watching.